Rat Collections! What's up, Basement Dwellers? Dorian here with Basement Arcadia, coming out to you the first episode of Rad Collections. And today we're here with Uncle Danny. You guys know him, you love him, you've seen all his videos on YouTube, but have you guys really seen his collection? Today we're going to talk about it, and just look at your wall here, Uncle Danny. you got some of the coolest things. I'm reliving my childhood. we got Sega, Super Nintendo, Nintendo, N64. Why don't you tell me a little bit about uh, some of your favorites here? Well, a lot of what I have here is stuff that I've just picked up, you know, over the past few years. A good portion of it is actually from uh, my childhood as well. Uh, my Atari that I have over here, uh, that is uh, my actual Atari. That right here? That one right there is, uh, this is the one that I, this was my first video game console. This is the actual unit. I've hung on to it since 1980, oh, two, one? No, 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 I, no. Like probably 85-ish is when I got this, around that time. It was right before the release of Nintendo, because I remember when I got it and then I started seeing people getting Nintendo shortly afterwards thinking, oh, that's way cooler. But I still own it. I still have some of the, a lot of the games for it that are my original copies of the games. So uh, that one right there uh, is one of my favorite pieces only because while it's not super rare by any stretch, they're actually quite cheap to find online, it is the one that I've had for over 30 years. And uh, it's kind of neat that I was able to hang on to it when I traded in so much of my other stuff, you know, whenever the new thing came out. So that's one of my big ones right there that I just really enjoy for my own, you know, personal collection reasons. Yeah, nothing's better than to be able to hold something from your childhood. Yeah. I know there's plenty of things that... It I wish I still had, like, my original Game Boy. I, mm -hmm. Likewise. But as soon as the color came out, I was like, oh, let's trade this in, Dad. Oh, and yeah. next thing I know, I get a color, and it's like, you know, I'm almost 30 years old. Looking back at it, I'm like, I miss having some mm -hmm. of my childhood. Yep, and I was happy to be able to get a lot of it back over time, because a lot of us over the years fell victim to Funko Land, because the new thing would come out, and how many of us traded in our old 8-bit Nintendos and all the games that we had for the new Sega Genesis and Sonic the Hedgehog. That's kind of a big thing that a lot of us fell for. Uh, and then we all regretted it years later when we wanted to play those old games again. What do you got here on your wall? It looks like, you I mean, you got a few different Segas here. You got uh, the old uh, Master System. This is the Master System. This is the Master. This was the... Gen 1 Genesis. Genesis. The, the Gen 2 with the Sega CD. Yep. That's pretty awesome. And what else you got here? Uh, Sega Saturn is right here. Uh, the Sega Dreamcast I have hooked up to the TV right now. Uh, so some of this stuff, I have holes in the wall, and that's because they're hooked up to my TV over here. Uh, but yeah, basically it's a Sega Master System, Gen 1 Genesis, Sega Saturn, uh, Sega uh, Genesis Gen 2 with the Sega CD, Dreamcast. Uh, over here is the TurboGrafx-16. That's something you don't see very often. That's actually a pretty rare piece. It's not super rare, and uh, mine, unfortunately, is uh, incomplete. I don't have the uh, Turbo CD. I also don't have the back that it normally uh, comes with that allows for uh, component cables, which is really nice and I'd like to pick up at some point. But yes, it is working, and I do have uh, the games for it as well. Below that, we have uh, the top-loading Nintendo the Nintendo Entertainment System, the classic Nintendo. Uh, Super Nintendo right here. Nintendo 64. Oh, uh, I love your dust cover for that. Complete with Superman 64. After that, uh, we have Nintendo Wii. The GameCube is hooked up to my TV as well. Uh, right here is a little... Uh, so, what are we talking about this little guy? <sighs> this is my little POS, the uh, Factor 5. This barely counts as a console, but since it's on my shelf right now, I'll throw it in. It is literally just um, a mock-up of kind of an NES-style system here. It's trash. This might actually be a video at some point. <laughs> I'm excited for that one. After that, let's we... talk about this one. So This is the Nintendo Famicom, the original Japanese Nintendo right here. It does work. Let's it... actually compare that to what we remember as a child of the normal Nintendo. It is uh, fairly, you know, similar in style as far as the controllers. The only difference is, is with the Famicom, uh, the uh, Player 2 controller here has a microphone on it to where you can actually speak to the games. And uh, as many people already do know, uh, this is what you use to destroy the Pole's voice in Legend of Zelda in the Japanese version. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't actually know that Yep, one. you can actually destroy them by using the microphone on the Famicom. After that, we have the Super Famicom here, which is the Japanese Super Nintendo, which looks a lot more similar to, to 
the American the one. That we one. Had. Yeah. This one's actually in way better shape than my American Super Nintendo here. That thing's gotten really yellow. Might have to... I'm always hesitant to give this stuff a cleaning just because you can really, you know, take off layers doing that. So, I've been hesitant. But it hasn't crossed your mind. Yeah, I've considered it. What do we got here with this guy? Alrighty. This guy right here is... Here, if you want to grab the plug, I just kind of keep this oh, stuff yeah, together yeah. just because... That right here. Yeah, <laughs> this right here is the Action Max. Uh, this was a desperate attempt to try to uh, compete with the video gaming era using your VCR. What you would do is you would uh, hook up this sensor to the top of your TV, and uh, this didn't actually connect to your TV in any way. Uh, it just worked around your TV. And uh, what would happen is during certain scenes, you would actually put VHS cassettes into your VCR. And uh, you would shoot at the screen during certain scenes. It was basically a rail shooter on VHS. And this little display right here would actually uh, keep your score. So if you got your highest score shooting at your screen when a VHS movie is playing, it, it basically would uh, you know detect whether or not you were making the hit. It was pretty bad. Can I actually talk about the, the actual light gun here itself? Looks awfully like a real gun compared to, like, the Zapper. I mean, it kind of reminds me of, like, an old German Luger. Yeah, I mean, the original NES Zapper actually looked a lot more like a real gun. In fact, uh, the, the updated Zapper was orange for that reason, so it would be obvious that it wasn't a real gun. The original NES gun was gray, like yep. this. Uh, but, yeah. But, I mean, like, this one is actually molded. Like, where the Zapper, you can kind of tell it's, it's more of, like, a laser gun, but this one... Out of the core of my eye, if someone would have sprayed this black, I wouldn't have been able to. Yeah, you know what? That's guns. that's true. You want to see um, some of the some of the some of the light guns out of the, the late seventies and early eighties. Those, those yep. look like real guns, and I mean they were look like they look like rifles. I mean, my God, like one of them, like it was almost uh, indistinguishable how realistic it looked. Uh, so that, I don't have one of those to show you, but yeah, that's one that you definitely. Yeah, that's something that has changed when it comes to uh, light guns, is that are unmistakably, or yeah, unmistakably not real guns. Now, talking about some of our childhood right here, this boy. Well, this, this right here is the Commodore 64. Uh, this one right here was basically a home PC unit. You know, you had your keyboard, you had the, uh, uh, the disk drives and everything here. Uh, as well as a printer, which I actually have up on top of uh, the TV over there. And uh, yeah, this... We'll show that here in a minute. Yeah, we'll show that as well. Um, yeah, these right here, this this was like your classic five and a quarter floppy disks. Uh, and uh, honestly, the Commodore 64 for the time had pretty dang good graphics. It just had a hell of a time loading it up. I mean, it was really um, a chore. For those of you that remember the whole CD command, looking up, you know, directory trees and everything when trying to load up a game on your old PCs, similar idea. It actually had a bit of a loading process uh, when it came to loading up your games. I mean, that was just standard back then. How many people do you think remember this bad boy? Oh, quite the a few. Dreamcast keyboard. Uh, the Dreamcast keyboard, which I'm actually going to show in an upcoming video for Typing of the Dead. Uh, this right here you'd plug into your Dreamcast and it was a fully functioning keyboard. Uh, there's also some other stuff uh, coming up like uh, some of the uh, original internet access. I actually have uh, their internet 2.0 disc where you could actually go and browse online using your keyboard and treat your Dreamcast as your own personal PC. So that's something that'll come up. But yeah, this, is, pretty neat. this is the keyboard for the Dreamcast right here. And then underneath the keyboard, so what's this big guy? This big giant VCR slash DVD looking thing is here. Let's see it from the top here. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this monstrosity. This here is the CDI. And uh, basically what Xbox One is today, this is what was it was trying to be that back in the early 90s. Basically, this thing right here uh, would do everything from, you know, play your video games, obviously, to also any CD you could put in and play it as a CD player. It also used a revolutionary new type of movie playing uh, format called VCDs, not DVDs. DVDs hadn't been released yet. It was VCDs. So you would literally play uh, movies on VCDs. And 
It was around this same era as laser discs. The problem with laser discs is they were so freaking huge. They're almost the size of vinyls. They were the size of 33 and a third vinyls, and you would have to flip them <coughs> halfway through the movie. So I mean, it didn't catch on because who wants to do that? The quality was better, but right in the middle of a two-hour movie, why would you want to flip it when you could just watch the whole thing on VHS? VCDs had Mine's the same okay. problem. Yeah, VCDs had the same problem where you would have to change discs. I have a couple of VCDs for the CDI. They work, but in the middle of the movie, you gotta change discs. Again, a reason why it didn't work until DVD came out when you could do multiple layers and you just left the disc in and it would do everything for you. Before that, this was what this was trying to be. It failed abysmal and uh, it actually brought us some uh, unique gems that uh, Nintendo I should say, this is the only system, major system, where Nintendo actually allowed them to use their likeness. So you got your Mario, uh, your Mario, uh, Hotel Mario is on that, so it uses Mario in that. It also has three of the worst uh, Zelda games ever. It's got uh, Zelda's Adventure, um, and then the two uh, Legend of Zelda with Link, and um, they are awful. Don't worry, they really don't exist. Um, if you ever want to watch them, just go anywhere on YouTube. Every gamer has streamed them at some point. Terrible. They're fake. Don't worry. Uh, after that, uh, down here, we have the Bally's Arcade. Uh, this right here was kind of uh, uh, hard to find exclusive that um, you had to... I don't know if we had to order order I, for I it. I that was a mail-in. I think it was a mail-in. Uh, obviously, I didn't mail in. I just I, I found this at one of our video game meetups here, and I was able to pick it up. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. I'm going to hopefully get it working at some point. But we're I thinking have it, it might just be a bad power supply. Well, that's what we're hoping for. That's what we're hoping for, and uh, we're going to give it a try to try to get the thing working so we can show it to you. Uh, but it's complete in box, and it's in really good shape, so I'm hoping that's the only problem because these are kind of hard to find. Uh, next to that, we have the Odyssey 2. Uh, the Odyssey is one of the first uh, non-Pong systems uh, that came out. This one came out a little later to compete with the Atari 2600. Uh, this one right here actually had uh, better graphics than the Atari 2600. Unfortunately, the library was lacking, and Atari just you know won uh, a lot of the competitive market because there was just so much available for Atari, whereas Odyssey, it was considerably more limited, even though the graphics were better. Below that... We have one of the more unknown Atari systems that not a lot of people seem to actually talk about that much, and that's the Atari XE. Uh, the Atari XE was set up more like, uh, kind of, you know, as far as the uh, setup, like the ColecoVision, where it was almost like a, a full, uh, a full PC. Uh, it had uh, just the actual console, but it also had it had a keyboard and it had. Um, a full interface where you could actually, you know, do a lot more with it, uh, which actually I think that alone deserves its own video, just because it was very unique. Well, yeah, uh, we'll definitely go over that. Yeah, for Ataris. Uh, after that is the Aquarius, and if you're familiar with the Texas Instruments uh, console, it's very similar. It's another one of those built-in video game systems with a built-in keyboard that, you know, changeable cartridges and everything. Uh, there's really not much to say about it. It wasn't really a popular system then, and it's kind of fallen into, you know, the oblivion of previous um, overinflated video game market, whatever you want to call it. it just it, it's not really something that people remember. Say up here um, is uh, the miracle, uh, the miracle piano teaching system for the Nintendo. You literally plug this piano into your Nintendo. And you, there was an interactive Miracle cartridge, a game that you put in, and you literally could learn piano via Nintendo. That's and, actually really uh, neat. No, this thing's fully functioning, and uh, this one will have its own video at some point here. Um, I don't have any, you know, release date set aside for that. This Hopefully is something season down the road, two, possibly. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we have a couple Wii boards up here, it looks like, and uh, we do have a couple Wii boards. This and is really neat up here. I don't know if you guys can see this, but. Uh, we got a bunch of guides up here. It looks like we got the Skyrim Collector's Guide, and if you guys remember that, yeah, these are. Think of your textbooks from high school, double it, and beat a small child with it. That's pretty much how big it was. Yeah, some of these up here, uh, these a lot of these are the ones that uh, survived uh, the purge of me getting rid of a lot of these. Uh, I, between my wife and I, we had a ton of these to the point where it was ridiculous, and uh, a lot of them, they're not worth anything. 
and uh, I just didn't care enough to hang on to every single one. So we got rid of a bunch of these. And these were kind of more the uh, the uh, special edition hardcover, a lot of like the really good ones. We hung on to those because those are harder more, to find ones. Those yeah. are more collector's things that I'd like to hang on to. But some of the stuff that we have up here that's just, just the regular, uh, you know, the borders. You all know what the borders of, uh, of the uh, strategy guides look like. The only ones we hung on to were the ones we had games for, but almost everyone uses Game Pack. I noticed you had another set of shelves over here. What do we got on uh, this side? It looks to be a lot more goodies. Uh, I remember a couple of these. Well, uh, we'll start uh, up on top. Uh, most people remember this and have seen this. It's the Super Scope. It's the Super Nintendo's answer uh, to the light gun and a poor answer to this. This thing ran through batteries so fast that, honestly, you just you know you would use it for an afternoon it would die and then you just had to wait until you could get more batteries and uh, people typically didn't use it so we'll put that over there for now <laughs> this is neat, though. underneath that yep we got the uh, Odyssey 4000 one of the many Odyssey systems uh, that were released this is not the original Odyssey this one came out a few years later this one I think is about 1977 if I remember right so is this one complete this is complete this has everything in it yep um, this thing right here, yeah, this thing this thing predates either of us. This is from uh, the, the 77. late 70s. Yeah, 77. So, yep, so yeah, it does predate us. So, yeah, this right here uh, was uh, Odyssey when they were starting to turn into Super Pong. And I can, uh, just since I'm holding it here, I can kind of show you. They have uh, some of the uh, games here. I'll do a close-up of that so you can actually see it. Um, but, yeah, this, this was... Um, you know, when Odyssey was really starting to take off into like a video game console rather than just, you know, a glorified Pong. Uh, that is complete in box here. Uh, next to that, uh, we have the uh, ColecoVision and Intellivision. We got both the Visions next to each other, along with their add-on expansions. Uh, this right here, you plug into the ColecoVision and you can play Atari 2600 games on your ColecoVision. That's actually pretty neat. You yeah. don't see that very often. Well, or... no, you would never see that nowadays just because they're, they were different companies. The fact that this actually, they got away with this is just amazing, even for that time. Right. Uh, the Intellivision, I do have the Intellivoice. It is plugged in, so I can't just grab it to show it to you here off the shelf. Uh, but the Intellivoice actually turns your Intellivision into, you know, a, a talkie, <laughs> a game, a game system that has voices. Granted, it's very digitized voices, and if you're in your 30s, you probably remember speak and read and speak and spell. It sounds like that. Uh, oh, so I it's, those. yeah, it uh, it's it's uh, it's of a different era, and I do have a handful of games uh, that uh, that do use the Intellivoice here, and uh, that is something for down the road. We'll do something with those because uh, it's definitely. A unique thing. An interesting part of history in the uh, development of games as they got better and better. Uh, down here, we're going to move a couple decades ahead, and I got PlayStation, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3. PlayStation 4 is hooked up to the TV upstairs, so I don't have that handy right here. Uh, but yep, I got the three PlayStations here. Um, not much to say. You all know what a PlayStation is, so I mean, I really don't know what else to say about that. You all remember how big the PlayStation 2 library was? I think yeah. It was what, 1,900 games? Or something, something like that. that. Something like that. Uh, right here, this is the uh, Telegames. It's basically an alternative Atari 2600 here. This is the Atari that I remember playing on. Well, this something similar. Well, right? it's not exactly the same because I actually do have the original wood Atari 2600. This is Telegames right here, so it's actually a different manufacturer. But really, I mean, it virtually is the same. I guess I'm thinking of the, the wood grain at 2600. That's, that's one that I had. That's down here. Yep. That's down here. I remember here. that one. Um, Atari Jaguar. I know a lot of people are aware of this. This is from the 90s. This was Atari's last attempt at um, trying to compete with, you know, the modern game world with the first 64-bit system. That was absolutely garbage. And uh, we have already done a couple videos uh in the past of just some of the gameplay that was uh, on some some of some of the games from this uh, like uh, Alien vs Predator which, which actually a good one. actually held up pretty well but that driving game yeah club drive not so much and that club drive is my original copy same with yeah, Alien vs Predator from when the system first came out I was one of the suckers who got suckered into this I'm sorry yeah it happens you got a couple of neat little handhelds here. Yep, yeah, this is the Sega Game Gear. This was uh, Sega's, uh, honestly, what I would think would be the... Virtually everything is superior to the Game Boy, yet lost out to the Game Boy. And uh, yeah, the Game Gear, it was in color. It had a lit screen. Uh, it was a little bit big and bulky, but for the time it was acceptable. 
Uh, big and bulky, we'll leave to uh, the Atari Lynx right here. This was Atari's handheld. Also had superior graphics, a ba backlit screen. It was in color, but it was a beast. And this thing ate through batteries. The Lynx ate through batteries fast. Oh, I believe it, but I just wanted to comment on how neat I think the games were. Like, yeah, it's that thin. I don't know if you could see it. Yep. That's about an eighth of an inch thin. I mean, we got in here road blasters. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it just fit right in there. It was neat. And then you get this monstrous thing. Here's a uh, here's a here's Game Gear. Here's uh, Mortal, say, Mortal Kombat Two. Compare sizes and thickness, even. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's acceptable for the time. But unfortunately, these both lost out to the original black or green and white Game Boy. The dot matrix. It's uh, it looks like you got a couple Game Boy uh, DSs there. A couple DSs. Sorry, it's Nintendo DS, yeah, not you, Game Boy. You all know what a DS looks like, so we don't need to show those. Uh, this beast right here. Many of you are familiar with. This is the Atari 5200. This was the one that bridged the gap between Atari 2600 and the Atari 7800. For some reason, they thought it was clever to just double it by 2600 every time, so that's why you get those numbers. 2600, 5200, 7800. This was supposed to replace the 2600, and it's no surprise as to why it failed. This thing is a beast. You need your own TV stand just for this. I mean, I'm not doing any camera tricks here. This is literally the size of the console. It's ridiculous. Uh, I also do have this that actually plugs into the 5200. And uh, with this adapter, you can play your old 2600 games on your 5200. But why would you? The controllers didn't work. That was one of the biggest problems besides the fact that this thing was a behemoth. The controllers just broke immediately. I'm fortunate enough to have two working uh, Atari 5200 controllers, and they oh, actually work really well. Oh, your 2600 controller right here. <clears throat> That's true. That's true. I did forget they do actually have the ports on there. So that is the 52. That's funny you bring up the 7800 because this, you got the 7800 Pro system right here. This is the Atari 7800. This actually, I'm surprised, didn't do a little bit better. It just the problem was is it came out at the wrong time. Uh, this came out during the um, Atari Sega, or I'm sorry, a Nintendo Sega era. You know where the, the Sega Master System and the Nintendo Entertainment System were big? This was their, this was them trying to compete uh, with higher graphics, which it does have. It does have much better graphics than the 2600 system. And it's a very, you know, nicely compact. sized, compact. It uses old 2600 controllers. It has the same ports. I mean, comparing it to a 2600, which yeah, it's not that much bigger, honestly. Yeah, and that's 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 the small Atari 2600 right here. Right. This was the one where it was under 50 bucks. 50 bucks. Now, isn't that nice? For those that remember that commercial. <laughs> um. So yeah, this one right here, it just it was too little, too late. Sales weren't that good. Nintendo and Sega Master System both had superior graphics to this thing. And like I said, it's a decent console. It just came out a little too late. So it didn't do too well. And uh, which is unfortunate. Now what is this? That's just a VCR. <laughs> Kids, ask your parents what a VCR is. Yeah, this VCR I have here just because, um, well, I suppose I'll include it because people wonder why the heck you have no VCR on here. It's not to play VHS tapes. In fact, this is a little game hack for you guys who want to hook up your old consoles to newer systems. One thing that VHS has that actually isn't really that common anymore is RF port in for your co or your coaxial cable and then component cable out. So I hook my Nintendo, my Sega Master System, even the Atari Jaguar has a, just an RF cable coaxial cable. Uh, even my you know like my ColecoVision and everything, I plug it in through the antenna jack and uh, have it go out through the. Uh, the RF. The, uh, or the, the, the no, the component cables. So that way I can plug it into newer TVs and it actually works really well and gives a pretty crisp picture. So if you have these old VCRs around, there's still a use for them. So that's why you keep that thing around. Mm -hmm. Looks like we got a complete power pad here. We do have a complete power pad. Oh, look how happy those kids are on yep. there. Yep. Oh, now you are playing with power. Body power. Mm. So this one was most commonly used with world-class track meet, or if you're fortunate enough to own a copy, stadium events, where you would literally just run, jump over hurdles and whatnot. It worked surprisingly well. A lot of people I knew growing up had this, and we would always, you know, play the power pads. Eventually, once we get tired, uh, we would cheat and just use your fingers. And just... Yep, and then that way you could beat Cheetah and win the race. Oh, hold on, hold on. I just want to talk about how 
Look how happy the family is on the back. Look at that. Yeah. You don't get that very often anymore with a family game night where the whole family gets around to play Nintendo. You didn't do it back then either. I know. Wishful thinking. Yeah. Uh, after that, uh, we have an Xbox 360. It's pretty current. Not much to say. Uh, this guy right here, uh, this actually has, this is another special collection for me. Sorry. I did a, I did get it fairly recently, actually. In fact, I picked this up during one of my game store tours. He had one on here. Uh, but this actually has a special place in both our hearts because it was the one that made us start making, well, game videos. Um, and here I'll put the link down if you want to click on it and watch. Decimals was kind of our first video game thing. Yeah. And it was on the Texas Instrument System. Uh, this thing right here, it is what it is. It, it, it was, you know, it's, it's, it's a little computer. Um, you know, you plugged it into your TV. You could program with it and everything. I mean, it, it's fine. It's nothing, you know, there's nothing really great nor terrible to say about it. So Most of the games were kind of a learning game. Yeah, decimals. It, it, it typically was kind of, you know, something you. I never saw one, but it's something you'd expect to see in your school, you know, for just, you know, a learning computer. Because everyone loves hurting their eyes so very much. Oh, yes, here we go. We have the Virtual Boy complete in box. This has everything. I was able to score one of these. It even has, like, the original instructions still in the little Ziploc bags it came in, so. With matching numbers, too. Yeah. So, yep, this this thing's kind of kind of neat that I was able to come across this. I never bought one of these pieces of crap when they first released. But if I wanted to try to collect it all, I had to get it. So, there it is. It hurts the eyes a lot. Um, let's see. I think we had an N64 box here. Yeah, and, uh, we got some boxes down here. This is what we were talking about earlier right here. This is the uh, original uh, Atari 2600 system. Uh, this was the old wood ones where everything in the late 70s had to be covered in wood, whether it be a record player, or a stereo system, your speakers, everything had to have that wood finish. Even the panels of station wagons had wood. Wood was just a thing in the 70s. The old woodies, man. And this was no exception. This thing had a wood finish around the side. But when most people see pictures of Atari 2600 consoles, this is what you see. And this is very complete. I want to set that there and we'll grab yeah. the next system here. This one, oh geez, this one kind of weighs a bit. Yeah, well there's a lot to this. Here we go. This is a 3DO. Uh, this actually was man... man this game system was manufactured by multiple different companies. It was a really weird... Uh, business model that they came up with. I actually made a video on it in my part one of uh, 3DO games. It's some of the most bizarre games ever came out on this system. Uh, this right here actually pretty much has everything it came with inside the box. This is the Gold Star version. There's many other versions out there. Um, it actually has some of the uh, stuff where you can sign up for the 3DO club if it, you know, if I knew it wouldn't be a complete waste of my time, it'd be kind of fun just to send it in, although I know it would just come back to me undeliverable. Well, on the back, it also, it kind of states here, five systems in one. You could watch feature-length movies on your MPEG-1 format. Yep. Audio CDs, art. Kodak, photo CDs, a little bit of product placement there. We're not sponsored. Do you, uh, does anyone, any of you guys remember Kodak CDs when they tried to go that route? Do you remember that? I do. Wait. That was... Yes, I do. Yeah. It yep. failed miserably. Well, yeah, it, it was pointless. And then CD graphics. Gotta love those CD graphics. We'll put that down here. Uh, of course, you know, we'll show off. You know, here's, you know, everyone's got to have it. Here's the NES Classic. Insert Retro Pie comment. <laughs> All right. Here is an Odyssey Pong system right here. We I got a few different uh, Odysseys here. And uh, this one is literally as basic as it gets. This box is pretty beat to water hell, damage, but, but I mean, it's still complete. Yeah, this one is 1976. So again, I got another system here that predates myself. And uh, this is Pong. So that's about the, all we can say without breaking it out and showing you, which we will do eventually. The Pong system I grew up with was actually the old JC Penny Pong. It was about... Yeah, there were lots of Pong systems. About that big. Had two big black knobs on there, and I remember actually playing that with my mom every once in a while. A friend of mine, actually, when I was little, um, it was one of the first video game consoles I ever played in my life. He actually had the same JCPenney Pong system at his house. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Well, it was just weird to think JCPenney had a video game system. Everybody had a video game system. Sears had Sears one. Sears had one, yeah. They, they, was it Dayton's at the time? Uh, yeah, Dayton's was a thing. I don't remember if Dayton's had its own 
specific. I'd have to look at that. But yeah, no, everybody had a Pong system. Which just blew my mind. No, and nowadays it's three major companies. Nintendo, yep. Microsoft, Sony. For now, it always changes, it seems. I would never would have... I never, never would have thought Sony and Microsoft would be two major companies 20 years ago. Sega, if any of you guys are still around and you see this, please come out with something. Your Dreamcast was an awesome system. Yeah, you're, you're, you're talking to no one there. I know. Uh, here is uh, a Telstar, Telstar Classic. Telstar Classic, yep. Um, you got a joystick down there. Yeah, that joystick was just kind of something I got. So, yeah, here is... I got another careful. Pong unit. Uh, no, that's the box the Atari came in. No, no, this. Oh, this, yeah. This this is the, uh, yeah, this is Telstar. This thing I gotta be careful with because the box is kind of falling apart, as is the system. Uh, this is another one of those wood grain 70s systems. It's another Pong system. There's a bazillion of these, and this just happens to be another one that I have. And this one was by Coleco. Yep. <clears throat> so uh, one thing I did notice you had up here, Uncle Danny, is some original Nintendo powers. I actually pulled a couple down because this predates me, but not you, but this is issue one of Nintendo Power. Well, that doesn't predate you. I think you would have been an infant around the time this came oh, out. Oh, that's July 88. I was still a twinkle in my dad's oh, eye. Really? No. Wow. I was just about to be born. Yep, this is issue number one of Nintendo Power. I also have issue number one. Nope, issue number two. This is issue number two of Game Informer. With At Toe Jam and Earl. Toe Jam and Earl, fun story. Um, Andy McNamara, the, uh, the chief editor for Game Informer, sold this copy to me when he worked at Funko Land in Eden Prairie back in 1991. So, fun fact. This right here I actually put uh, in a little sleeve. This was Atari's other attempt to try to compete with the current market. Uh, this is... Is that Atari Mania? Or whatever. Atarian. This, Atarian. This, is, this is Atari's attempt to be Nintendo Power. And we'll save that for its own video. It's, it's definitely something special. So yeah, these are some of the oldest uh, magazines that I have here. Some of these, there are just other old ones, but these are the oldest of all three that I have. So yeah, Nintendo, yeah, yeah, Nintendo Power, Atarian, and Game Informer. Um, I don't have issue number one uh, because I wasn't a Fun Club member until I got this issue. You could only get the original Game Informer if you were a Funko Land Fun Club member in 1991, and I wasn't. So I don't have that one. There's still time though. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could try to fill out my Fun Club membership on the back of one of these Game Informers <laughs> and send it in. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna have you. It's just over the years. Lots of uh, just different Game Informers and Nintendo Powers, which is now done, so there actually is, it is possible just to get the complete set of them. I have most, not all, the ones I'm missing actually mostly are the newer ones, because we just quit subscribing, because I just didn't care anymore. Sure. Uh, Maybe you need to kind of go back and oh, at the, least reread them. The, old ones, the old ones are great. It's just they're little time capsules. I love it. Um, yeah, otherwise at the end here I got a couple of those how to win at Nintendo games and those kinds of uh, books and all that stuff. But yeah, no, I've, I've hung on to a lot of these old magazines from back when I was a kid, so it's kind of neat that still have a lot of that. So it looks like we're over here at your uh, Nintendo wall and uh, you got a lot of goodies here. Uh, what are some of your favorites? Well, my, uh, one of my favorites I would have to say is uh, Castlevania up on top. It's one of the ones I still play the heck out of. I actually bring that one down and put that in a bit. Uh, otherwise, the Mario games, like, you know, my everyone, pretty much a fan of the Mario games, got all of those right here. Um, How close are you to uh, complete? I would say I'm about a third of the way there. I still have a long ways to go. I have about, uh, I think, just shy of 300, so, yeah, I'd say it's about a third, depending on what you're counting as, um actual Nintendo releases, and that's up for debate, depending on whether or not you want to count the unlicensed Nintendo games. So it's anywhere between six, 700 games total, depending on what you're going to include uh, into that, so. You got any uh, super rare ones, would you say? Any real super rare ones? Well, I mean, I'm just going to pull this out. Yeah. This one uh, took me by surprise. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. a little Samson there. That is a little Samson. Um, and the label looks a little funky. Uh. It, it, it should. It's not real. I bought that uh, just as a filler just because it's one of those games that I'm never going to own the original copy. I don't care enough to uh, in spend the, you know, whatever amount it is. I didn't get it back in the day when it was only, you know, 80 bucks. So I missed my opportunity. That opportunity is never going to come back. So I just grabbed uh, a repro knowing it was a repro and uh, 
added it to the collection. But. It's still neat though, and plus, I mean, it, it plays does everything that a little Samson should do. Yeah. It plays little Samson. It plays little Samson, but yeah, unfortunately, yeah, it's not a real little Samson because I just refuse to spend that kind of money. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I mean, it's you know, there's a lot of good ones here, a lot of bad ones too. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm just over time, uh, just trying to pick up as many as I possibly can. Now, would you say this is going to be the one that you're going to try to complete first out of all of them? Oh, yeah. If I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to at least try to shoot for, I think my goal is about 90%, just because there are certain games for the system uh, that I will just never own, because I just I won't pay the price to uh, to add it to the collection. Stadium events. Stadium events, Real Little Samson, uh, Color a Dinosaur I'll probably never get, uh, Flintstones 2 I'll probably never get. Those all just run way more than I'm willing to spend. Even some of the lesser ones, uh, it's possible I might get a, a copy of Die Hard. Surprisingly, that one's actually up there. That's, you know, at least $100 for that. Is it really? Yeah, it's that high. So, I mean, there are some that I just might never ha ever get a hold of because I could easily get that. It's just, do I want to spend that on it? Do I care enough? So. But if you get... I have, to you have Total Recall, you kind of need to get Die Hard. Well, or get all those fun movie films. Yeah, well, there's plenty of them. I have I have a lot of them. I have a lot of these movie films. But yeah, there's just some that there aren't as many copies of, so I don't have... Uh, I, I might not ever get them. Otherwise, yep, there's uh, Complete In Box. Uh, not Complete In Box, SNES here. Uh, back here is uh, my Super Famicom games. So yeah, Super Famicom, Super Nintendo. Uh, this one is awesome to me. Like, yep, this uh, this is legit. That is an actual copy of Secret of Mana, and that is 100% complete in box. Uh, we've actually played it. It still works. Yeah, complete Conquers Bad for a day. So yeah, there's uh, you got a lot of you know nice gems here. Um, uh, complete Leisure Suit Larry uh, for uh, by Sierra for DOS. There's a one right here, and this I actually just picked up at. Uh, a uh, game store the other day, uh, complete in box uh, Mario paint, including the mouse pad. So that was kind of a neat little find there while we were there for uh, the uh, gamers doing good. So that was, that was a nice little addition to the collection there from yesterday. And uh, for those that are nostalgic, I still got one of the old Bunkle Land uh, NES uh, game holders. Pretty common, but still kind of fun to hang on to. Yeah. So yeah, this is uh, kind of the Nintendo corner over here. A lot of the Nintendo games are on the shelf. I try to keep everything as close together as possible. So. Yeah, this is, uh, this is... We'll get a nice close-up so that way you guys can kind of see yeah. some of the titles and how many he really has, because just looking at the picture here, it doesn't do it justice. Like, it's a beautiful collection. And yeah. I, I'm jealous. Like, I wish I still had some of my old collection. Like, I, I, I kind of laugh because I'm looking at a Metroid without the label, and it's actually a rare five-screw Metroid, but it just doesn't have the label. So that was a pretty awesome Nintendo collection, but I see you have uh, other things here. Look, we got some... Atari 2600, we got some 7800s? No, no, those are 56. Nope, those are actually uh, Intellivision. Okay. Which one? Uh, these are ColecoVision. Yep, ColecoVision. These are Odyssey. Uh, these here are uh, Texas Instruments. These are 5200 back here. Wow, those are big cartridges. Yeah, big cartridges for a big console. Yep, here is uh, Star Raiders on Atari 5200, and they are pretty good sized cartridges. What's the thing on the back there? Uh, these right here, you would actually, uh, these came with the games. You would put this on the 5200 controller. It has like a numeric keypad. And this way, it would actually tell you what each of the buttons did for each game. Oh, that's pretty neat. And uh, yeah, some of the games came with those. So you could just put those overlays on there. The ones that use the numeric keypad. Star Raiders used a lot. Uh, I have uh, Star Raiders was actually my first video game I ever owned on the Atari 2600. And uh, I had I had it on a Atari 2600, and it actually came with uh, its own controller. It was actually a keypad for the Atari 2600, and this actually, you know, you could ma navigate your maps and everything. With oh, this. that's really neat. Yeah. I was wondering why that box is so big. Yep, it came with uh, everything, everything. So yeah, it was uh, it was kind of a fun game for the time. It was a complete Star Wars ripoff, like all the ships in it were taken straight from Star Wars. Or an X-wing? No, the uh, basically it was like you know like the Tie Fighters and everything, oh, and, the, okay. and the Star Destroyers. They were in this game, and they just called it other stuff. But it was totally they, like the, the Tie Fighters were called cruisers, and the Star Destroyers were called base stars. I mean, it was, and they they looked just like those just those uh, those ships from Star Wars. 
Over here, I have uh, Atari XD games. Uh, these are also kind of uh, interesting little cartridges here. They're really, you know, thick. And uh, this is World Karate Championship. Uh, some of these are repro uh, cartridges. Others are legit cartridges. Uh, this right here, yeah, this is kind of a neat one. This is a legit XE cartridge here for Tempest. And uh, Tempest on XE was actually really impressive for the time. I might actually show you this one someday. So I noticed that some of these cartridges say left cartridge. Was there actually a difference there where it was left or a right? Or um, was well, that for something completely different? These 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 ones were taken using old um, XE carts, and yeah, that's they, they, they were ports on there, so. Um, yeah, unfortunately, they're, they're not the legit ones, but uh, I was able to find some of those secondhand and they were really cheap, so I picked them up, but oh, they're, they're not legit. Looks like you got a couple of goodies up here. Uh, yeah, these ones here are actually worth, these are, these are fully complete in box and everything. Uh, yeah, Splatterhouse, uh, Splatterhouse 2, Splatterhouse 3, and uh, yeah, Splatterhouse 3 with the, before the rating system went into full effect, it had the old. MA-13. And that's not even, that MA-17 was mature, MA-13 is now what we call teen. I, it kind of tells you how much they've turned down the gore in Splatterhouse 3, because it got a teen rating, not an M. Oh, do you have the first Splatterhouse also? I do, I do have the original Splatterhouse. That was on Graphic 16 That is right here. Uh, with the dust cover and everything. Yep, with the dust cover. Here's the hue card for uh, the uh, Turbo Graphics. You slide it in and play. Uh, this was a uh, port from uh, the arcade. Uh, very watered down port, both in graphics and content. It's not nearly what it was in the arcade, but uh, still, still a neat little uh, addition, you know, as far as Turbo Graphics. Got a handful of other ones here. Uh, Keith Courage and Alpha Zone. A couple of the Bonk games. They had some decent games on Turbo Graphics. I think it's actually kind of an underrated system. Looks like you got a couple of Virtual Boys over there. Yep. Yeah. We got a handful of the Virtual Boys. Yeah, Wario Land, Mario Clash. Oh, look at all these. I don't know if I'll ever show you these because uh, I don't really know if they'd make that good a video. And you like your eyesight. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, we got. Uh, yeah. Is that the Jaguar now? These are Jaguar. These are, yep, Club Drive, Alien vs. Predator, White Man Can't Jump, because we all needed that made into a game. And of course, you know, Cybermorph and the whole, where did you learn how to fly, lady? <laughs> what are those uh, little red guys there? Those uh, are kind of neat. These, um, these are just little uh, tiger add-on things. I don't have any oh, okay. to use them with, but... Uh, They're kind of neat still. They, they came in a box, and I'm like, well, I have them. I'll put them on the shelf, even though I don't have anything to use them. Uh, up here is uh, PS1, uh, most are just your classic PS1 games, I don't have a huge extensive collection of them, most of it is just uh, stuff that I actually enjoy playing. But I am excited that we're going to, spoiler alert, we are going to do this for a video. Yeah, because yeah, that needed to be made into a game. Razor, Razor Scooter. Yep. I'm going to do so many <laughs> fall on rocks. Otherwise, yep, we got uh, original Xbox, 360, Wii, Wii U, PS2, PS3, PS4, all of, you know, most of the stuff a lot of you have seen. Don't have to go into complete detail. We'll, yeah. you know, do some shots here. Behind you, though, on the other hand, uh, this is more of the stuff that I kind of wanted to show off here. Because these are my uh, games for the CDI, the big, you know, monstrosity over on the other wall. Uh, this right here is probably one of the worst games I have ever played. It is pretty much unplayable. The play control on this is god-awful. And uh, that might be saved for the future as well. Oh, but hold on. The best of draw 50. CDI had all kinds of uh, different programs. Not all of them were games. A lot of them were just different interactive things, including like drawing and painting, kind of like Microsoft Paint, but you could do it all on your CDI. Uh, over here, uh, this is all CDI down here. We have Dances with Wolves and Forrest Gump on CDI. So. If you're ever really bored, we can watch these movies on CDI in lesser than good quality and then have to flip it in the middle of the movie. While talking about it the whole time. Yeah, we could do that. But yeah, I got some good ones here. Uh, got both the Dragon's Lair games. Uh, I got some demo, some old demo discs from back when these games were getting released. So yeah, I got the demo discs for Hotel Mario and the Zelda games here. So that was actually kind of a neat little thing I stumbled upon. I saw this and I actually remember playing this on PC. Yep. The Seventh Guest. Yeah. Yep, the Seventh Guest and Eleven Eleventh Hour kind of point and click um, uh, brain teasers. Um, 
decent games. It ported just fine onto CDI. I mean, it was meant to be that kind of a game, so it's fine for what it is. Uh, here is all of my insane 3DO games, and I've done a lot of these on, uh, on the video, like Cyberdello, which was one of the most ridiculous games I have ever played. Uh, I have uh, Cyberdello. This one right here uh, is Wing Commander 3. This is a solid game. This one starred uh, Mark Hamill. You play as Mark Hamill. It actually is a pretty good game. It though, actually is. Wing okay. Commander 3, just across the board, is a really good game. I originally played it on PC back in the 90s, and it was one of the first like full immersive video video games where it was all done live action and you could control you know, the decisions you make and everything. It was a big deal back then. It's pretty commonplace now. Yeah. Uh, up here you got some Sega Master System, uh, Dreamcast, uh, nothing really that, you know, stands out. Yeah, you got a couple Sega CDs, you got one Saturn up there. Yeah. Um, Is that, uh, Al what's the Sega CD Saturn game there? Alien Trilogy for Sega Saturn. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, you know, I got, uh, you know, some, you know, Shenmue on, uh, Grandia 2, I got, you know, some good uh, Beyblades. Some, some, you some, got some good ones some, up there. Some fun, like, RPG style uh, Dreamcast games. A lot of really bad ones, too. Yeah, I just got a hold of these recently. Some of the stuff I used to have as a kid. Um, so we got some uh, DC, DC Atari Force comics. This was stuff that... Oh, man. A catalog. Yep, that's, that is actually, that is something I used to look through as a kid all the time. It was like all these games that I wanted. I'll probably make a, a video on, on this stuff here. I've I actually never seen it. I guess that's before my time, so I guess <coughs> that's why i never seen it. But So back in the corner over here, this is uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, DS, 3DS, all the different handheld stuff. Uh, most of it's complete in box right here. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a handful of... Uh, Neat stuff uh, back over here, you know, the, you know, Zelda Four Swords, the Golden Sun games, uh, for Game Boy Advance. I want to point out the uh, Bravely Default Collector complete up there. Oh, yes, up on top here, yep, Bravely Default up there. Um, but yeah, a lot of it is uh, a lot of the stuff that's come out in the past you know, decade, they're not terribly old. The uh, stuff that I usually uh, like to show off the most is you know the stuff from the you know, 70s and 80s, the stuff that you just don't see floating around as much. DS, it's, it's pretty easy to find it's still. Everywhere. Yeah, it is. Well, Uncle Daniel, well, thank you for uh, showing off your collection. It's it's definitely been a fun uh, blast from the past. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Walk through childhood memories for both you and me. Um, but hey, if any of you guys want to show off your collection, go to basementarcadia.com. Contact us. It'll come to our email. It'll either come to myself or Uncle Danny. Mm -hmm. um, let us know when you're available. We'd love to show off your collection. We will never use addresses or anything like that. Or if you don't want to show anything, we won't show it. But we want to show the world that here in Minnesota, we are collectors. We like to have fun. Yep. And uh, I know there's a lot of people out there, especially locally, uh, that have huge, enormous, very impressive collections of stuff that's really rare that I just love, you know, just to come over and just, you know, chat about and you can show off some of the really, really neat, really ultra rare stuff that you have and maybe even show us some stuff that we've never heard of because there's tons of stuff out there from back in the day that, you know, both us and a lot of you viewers out there have just never seen. So, uh, yeah, contact us, basementarcadia slash contact and uh, let us know if you want to actually, uh, schedule something up and we will go over and uh, take a look at your stuff as well and show it to the world. Yeah. We'll, we'll make the drive out to you. I know one thing that I personally would love to see, I would love to see a Nintendo 64 disk drive. I've never seen one yeah. in person. That would be it. That would be. Neither have I actually. So yeah, let us know and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good day guys.